Hello everybody, welcome to 10 Cow Ranch. Got a fun little video today. This is a part two of the five things what not to do with your horse. We've had a ton of response, a lot of great comments. It was fun for me because there was a lot of things that I didn't think about and the viewers had just, and some things I was doing and didn't even realize it. So I think this will be, this will be a fun video. Before we get started, I ask you guys to take a minute, please subscribe and uh, hit the thumbs up to get the notifications for the new video. So. Here we go. So I got Kane today. You guys have seen him a ton. He's my demonstrator for the day. Um, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is, is saddling. And there's always a couple things to go along with that. So what we talked, or one of my one of my commenters from the viewers was to reach under to get your cinch with your left hand. And I was doing that and didn't even realize it. So what that does is keeps you looking at the business end of this horse. So if he's gonna turn and kick or do anything, you're facing, so at least you can see it coming. And I, I think I was doing that, honestly, and never even thought about uh, pointing out the fact of using your left hand versus your right hand. So that was a great comment for sure. We had tons of comments about like that. There again with the back cinch. Reach with your left hand, then you're, then you're at least facing the back of the horse if he, if he does try to kick you, at least you see it coming. I use a breast collar a lot, and uh, that's going to be a subject for another video, but uh, I just pretty much always leave this uh, lighter breast collar on. Okay. So, next thing we're going to talk about before we get on him is, uh, you know, when I had my kids riding with me when they were younger, I told them a thousand times, you're going to get bucked off one of these days, and when you do, land on your hands. So the fact of the matter with horses, if you ride long enough, you're going to come off a horse. Whether you have one step out from underneath you or whatever the circumstance is, you are going to come off at some point in your life. And what I tell them is, reach for the ground. So you're sitting on your horse, and there's a split second that you say, okay, I'm, I'm off the horse. So if you... I call it reach for the ground. So you're on your horse, things are, you're in a wreck. You know, there's a split second there. You say, all right, I'm coming off. If you kind of just roll either side, left or right, and just reach for the ground, I would rather land on the ground and have a little bit of cushion than just like land on a shoulder or flat on your back. You land and it does two things. Like I said, it, it gives you some cushion. Instead of just splatting like a big sack of potatoes, you can reach for the ground. It gives you a little bit of cushion yeah, you might skin your nose a little bit, but it's not that hard, solid fall. And the other thing it does, I just got a cowboy boot here to help us demonstrate, is, is you're on your horse like this, and, and you know you ride with your stirrup all the way in, and if you get back bucked off out the back especially, and you land on your back, you can have your stirrup like that and get hung up. You're in deep, deep trouble right now. Um, you're on your horse, things go south, you get bucked off, you land on your belly, reaching for the ground. So now you're like this. Your foot comes right out of the stirrup. It's, uh, you know, I was grateful that the guy that taught me good horsemanship when I was a teenager taught me that. And we started a lot of colts and I got bucked off a lot. And uh, and you think about if you're on your back and you get stuck like this, man, you can be you can be in serious trouble. You let you roll on your belly, that, stir that foot's gonna come right out of the stirrup. So that's just something, and of course, I've, I've done it myself, but still, you think about it, when you're in that situation, if you're coming off the horse, sometimes things like going to slow motion, and uh, you have to really think about getting your hands on the ground. That'll get your feet out of the stirrups. Get rid of that for right now. So, we're gonna hurry and slip the bridle on him. We talked about taking the halter off on the last video, so I'm not going to put the bridle on with him, with him, or put the bridle on this horse with him tied up. So we've already talked about that. So. 
So the next thing we're talking about is cinching the horse. Um, I, for me, I think about it as a three-part process. So I've got the saddle on and it's just, the cinch is just tight enough to hold the saddle on in place. So if I'm gonna go to the desert, I'll just put him in the trailer like this. And then what I think about is when I get to the desert, I unload him, first thing I do is take another cinch or two on the saddle, or on the cinch. I said that wrong, take another hole or two on the cinch, and then I get my bridle ready, get my lunch ready, do whatever, and then right before I step on, I'll pull him up a little bit more. So here at home, we'll walk over to the arena. A lot of times what I will do is halfway between where I saddle and the arena, I'll just grab another hole or two on that cinch. Then we'll take him the rest of the way to the arena. Then I'll grab another hole, to, hole or two on that cinch. And on the back cinch, I didn't talk about this earlier, but I just like the back cinch touching the belly. It's not tight, but it's not loose either. I just, you know, and what would happen is if I was on the desert or on the mountain, I'd ride for an hour or so, probably take another cinch up or another hole up on that rear cinch. But for just riding right here, that's about the way I like it. So, all right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is getting on and off your horse, mounting and dismounting. So when I had novice riders and of course my kids, I told them, put your big toe in the stirrup. So when you go to get on, I just barely want my big toe in that stirrup. Um, and same for getting off. So for me, back when I was a gymnast, what I used to do is take both feet out of the stirrup and just swing off. Those days are gone now. So on or off, I just put my big toe in, and I'll show you that in just one second. Um, I've had a lot of comments from my English riding friends, and they like to take both feet out and then swing off and dismount that way. That's not how I like to do it. Both ways I feel like are right. So we talked about this too. Choke up on the left rein, put your right hand on the horn. So when I get on him, see where my foot is? I barely have my big toe in that stirrup. I'm not, I'm not gonna put my foot any further in than that. Right now, things went south, I, I'd be safe. There's no way I'd be hung up with just that much in. Swing on, get things situated, make sure he's not gonna buck me off today. Now I'll put my feet in all the way. So that's how I that's how I ride on these two-inch flat bottoms. So to dismount, I pull that stirrup out. Now I just got my big toe in, of course my right foot's out. Swing off just like that. So alrighty, we got one more thing to talk about. So for me, this is <clears throat> this is something that, whatever reason, is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine. So when you're on the desert, for us, we usually have a pretty good group of people. And we usually have two or three young bucks that are quick and agile and first one on their horse and they think they need to be the first one in the mountain. So me, being a little longer in years, a little more gray in my beard than them, I might be a little bit slower. So if I'm fiddling around with my horse, trying to get my lunch, trying to get my water bottle, whatever, and they leave me, what does my horse do? He gets real nervous in a hurry. So I'll show you, I got Macy tied up over here. So I got my old buddy Cowboy Joe that's with me and he's a little longer in years than I am and he's gonna take a minute to get on his horse. I get on and I will go stand nose to nose with the with the horse that the the guy's trying to get on then i'm using macy as that demonstrator she doesn't feel like she's getting left look at her she's super relaxed she's not fidgeting around she's not wiggling around and i don't know if she'll do it today but you think about it if i start riding off what does she do well today she's home so she doesn't do anything but when them horses feel like they're being left they get real nervous in a hurry. And so now you have your buddy Cowboy Joe 
that's uh, fiddling around over there trying to get on his horse and everybody's left and now his horse is getting all nervous, anxious, wiggling around and he's trying to get on. And I just think that's poor horsemanship. You know, I, for me, I, I've had enough situations that when I get on my horse, I look around to, to the group. If I have somebody that's, that's having any issue or just have to take an extra minute, I just, the, the wild cowboys behind me, they can go to the top of the hill if they want. But for me, I'm just gonna go stand nose to nose with the horse and just wait. I'm not in that big a hurry. We're supposed to be enjoying this. It's on a race. So I'll just stand here when my friend gets on his horse and everything's settled and we ride off together. So. See right there, I shortened up that inside rein and didn't even realize I did it. So that's another good practice we talked about on the, that on the previous video. So we're gonna wrap it up for tonight. I wanna tell everybody thanks for subscribing. We've had some good growth on the channel and I really appreciate that. And if you haven't, take a minute and please subscribe. So this is part two. I will put the link to part one in the description. So if you guys haven't seen part one and you're interested in seeing the, the two parts of the horsemanship video together, then you can uh, find it real quick. So there again, we're gonna wrap it up for tonight. Tell everybody thanks for watching.